Right everyone, web collector here. Got this new hunting torch recently. It's the Brynite B158 hunting flashlight. So I thought I'd do a review on it. So uh, this is what you get when you actually get the uh, flashlight. You get a lot of stuff with this. It's proper decent for all the um, sort of accessories you get. You pretty much get everything you'd need. So you get the flashlight itself, which is a zooming flashlight with a uh, one mode, just high. Um, I've noticed some of the other versions. I know some people had versions of this where you could change to different modes, but this one doesn't do that. But this is this lacks that, but has other features that the other one didn't. So you get the flashlight. You get a 18650 battery rechargeable. The milliamps is 2,400 milliamps. You get a charger and the wire for that. You get a car charger for it. I've got an American uh, plug there, but you could probably get a European one. Lanyard, a tail switch on a wire for when you mount this to a gun, because it is designed for that. And then you also get four different bulbs. You get the normal white bulb that's in it already. You get a green one, a red one, and an infrared one, which I'll show you all those later. And you also get the weaver mount, or the 21mm mount, whatever you want to call it, to mount this straight to a Picatinny rail or a um, weaver rail, whatever you want to call them. So I'll put those to the side and then I'll talk to you about the uh, actual flashlight. So this is the uh, Brynite B, B158, there's the uh, name there, I don't know if you'll be able to see that. It's got a big domed lens which gives it a very big wide beam when it's zoomed in and out. So you just put the 18650 in the back there, screw the tail cap on, and that is the only switch it has on it, just one at the back there. The whole torch is made from a 6061T6 aluminium alloy with a hard anodized finish on it. Those two screw holes there are for mounting the uh, Picatinny mount on, you just screw it in. This is fully waterproof as well to uh, two meters. And to zoom it in, you just screw the back in and out. I'll demo that all inside and outside in a bit. So, yeah, there is the lens, big domed lens. Like I said, you can see the bulb in there. And if you wanted to change the bulbs, you just undo this front part bit tough at first because it's got the o-rings to stop it uh, leaking and there's the bulb there twist the front in the back in so and then you can just unscrew it I would recommend taking the battery out when you do this but I've just left it in just for this demo yeah so then you would just get one of the other ones I won't put one of them in for now and then you just uh screw them back in but that is literally it that's all you do to uh change the bulbs like i said you get the green the red the infrared and then just a the standard white bulb they're all cree leds because this one only runs on high it will run for a full 1.3 hours if you add it on constantly that's as far as i'm aware anyway because I've seen the other ones doing strobe and high, low, medium settings. But I think that's to do with the bulbs that you get. And I'm pretty sure, no matter what I've done with this, I couldn't get it to change the, uh, the modes. So it must just be single modes for this version at the minute. Well, like I said, that one lacked the infrared light and that. So you get an infrared light. And also, the other one, they had to change... You'd have to change this and make it into this. You get these 
included with this version. Yeah, it's uh, 249 grams, so it's got a little bit of weight to it, but you know, not really enough to bother you. I don't know how much you would be using it as a torch anyway, because I think with the mounts, you're probably going to be more likely to buy this to put it on a gun or whatever. I've got it set up on a crossbow. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do now. I'll show you the indoor footage and the outdoor footage and the torch mounted on a crossbow. Right, so this is the torch mounted on the side of a crossbow near the fore end. You can put it in lots of different places. I've got it here so you could turn it on and off with your left hand near the fore end and zoom in and out that way. But there's various ways to do this. You could also do it on the weaver rail on the top or on top of a scope. Here it is so that you can do the switch with your left hand again. This is the wired extendable switch. Going to the fore end there, you just stick it on with Velcro. This one is with the switch stuck to the actual grip and you can do it with the same hand as you pull the trigger. So this is the light indoors. I thought I'd show you the beam indoors and outdoors. So each light, there'll be a bit of footage, apart from the infrared one, because outside it wasn't quite, my camera couldn't pick it up quite good enough. Well, you can see the zoom working there and how powerful that light is. Yes, yeah, so that is just the normal white sort of light, the normal Cree LED indoors. Lights up the whole room. And then this is the light outside. Zoomed right in. It's got, a, I think it said 480 meter beam distance. And when you zoom in, you can really see that fills the whole garden with light. So next we're going to the green light. And the green and the reds are good for night vision and possibly other stuff that I may be unaware of. So this is the green indoors. I'm not sure how this is going to come across because of the yellow walls. But yeah, you can see that it's green. So yeah, it's zoomed in and out. Next you'll see it outside. There it is on. Yeah, the green and the reds are good for night vision. Uh, one, ha I think the red has darker shadows, the light has greener shadows. But the green can be seen further away by other people and the red can't be seen quite as far. So it's slightly good for staying undercover. I think that's it anyway, I'm not 100 sure on that. Most people buying these kind of torches would know that kind of stuff anyway. So this is the red. We all know that red is good for keeping your night vision at night. So that is on. To the bare, to the naked eye, that white spot in the middle is red. And the whole light is more like that outer rim. It's all red. It's just the camera doesn't pick it up quite as well. Shows up slightly better outside, I noticed. When you zoom in, you'll see the whole garden is completely red. So yeah, that is the standard just red bulb. And then in a second, I'll show you the infrared bulb indoors. I only showed it indoors because outside you couldn't quite, it was slightly too far away so you couldn't actually see it. So this is the infrared and to the naked eye you cannot see this at all when you turn it on. If you look at the bulb you can see a slight red glow. Sometimes if you're up close to something you can see a little bit of red. But yeah, to the naked eye you can't see this at all, this only comes across on camera. 
and see that is the infrared. Now we'll go back to the tabletop. Right, so that was it indoors and outdoors. You can see the quality of the beam, the different lights. The different lights are good for, I think the green and red are good for um, night vision, but one has an advantage over the other in different ways. I think, I'm not 100% sure on this, but the red keeps your night vision slightly better and is slightly brighter and doesn't carry so far, but it creates darker shadows. Whereas the green, I think, can be seen slightly further away by other people, but the shadows aren't as dark. Something like that, anyway. And then the infrared is used for hunting with a camera, basically. Once you've... See, on the actual footage, I would have mentioned this anyway, but you can't actually see that light with your bare eyes. Well, you can just see a very light bit of red, but it's not bright like a torch, like it is when it's shown for a camera. Yeah, there's the tower switch. It's got the sort of cutouts to press it in easier. You've got lanyard holes. does roll a little bit, but, you know, that doesn't really matter. But, you know, it is perfect for what it's made for, which is putting either on the top of a scope or on the side of a gun or on the back of a gun. You know, to zoom in and out like that. So, yeah, highly recommended. Get all those accessories. You know, and it is a very nice flashlight. And you can also, from what I've heard, buy those bulbs easily as well. So you could easily buy a different bulb that probably does different modes anyway. You know, probably from Brynight, for all I know. So yeah, that is it. If you're interested, the Brynight B158 hunting flashlight link will be below in the more info section. And any info I haven't mentioned will be there as well, just in case. Yeah. I think it's very good. One last thing, it's 480 meter beam distance if you wondered. I did that about 30 meters in here, so that's nowhere near the length it can uh, go. Yeah, there it is. Brynight B158 hunting flashlight. More info below. Hope you enjoyed the video and hope you found this helpful. See you later.